I know it's been a while, it's Capimura. A couple things have changed. Yes, I know I haven't posted in over a year. And yes, I know my hair is blonde. Long story, quarantine, super bored, but I just wanna jump right into this video because it's super important. Before I start this video, I wanna give you a little bit of background. If you are new to this channel, I used to do moto vlogs, vlogging, all that kind of stuff. I took a year break because I just burnt out. I got bored, I didn't know what to talk about. There wasn't enough going on around here. I felt like I constantly had to push my riding and push who I was riding with in order to make content. And just got to the point where I actually stopped riding my motorcycle because I just didn't have the passion to make videos and then I just didn't like riding because I was constantly thinking about making videos. Fast forward to today, I'm going to change up what's on this channel. I wanna do more how-tos and reviews. And the first review is going to be on Aurora Rock Helmet. Yes, if you've been to this channel, you've been a subscriber for a while, you know that I did the old Aurora Rock Helmet review. Um, it's the one that has like the different pieces that you can put on. It was super silver. Fast forward to a couple months ago before they released the new Atlas, they reached out to me. They said, hey, we'll send you a new helmet. If you take down that old review video, it had close to 100,000 views, all negative responses. Um, and obviously my review, like I always do, is completely honest with you guys. They didn't like it. They sent me a new helmet. I'm being completely transparent with you guys. That's what's showing me on camera today, is me reviewing the new Atlas 2.0 and all the new additions that they have, carbon fiber and all that. I just wanted to jump right into the review. I appreciate you guys sticking around if you're still here and let's get into it. Here we have the new Rorock Atlas. I wanna get right into it so I don't waste your guys' time. I know there's a ton of other people on the internet that have it and what I wanna talk about is this company right off the bat. They put a lot of technology and stuff into these helmets. They also have a huge social media team that reaches out to almost every single rider and will give free stuff to anybody on the social media platforms in order to push their helmets. Usually when a company does that, that means that this is not very expensive to make and the markup on this is extremely high. So they can give out 10 of these and make all their money back with one purchase. Just wanna get that out there. I did not pay for this helmet. I'm not getting paid for this review. So I just wanna get that out before anything. Just like the other review video. In the box, you're gonna get a couple of things. The helmet, right? Cool little helmet bag. We'll get to that later. You're gonna have your little launch book. We went over this before. It has stickers, how to use a helmet. If you need to read this helmet review guide on how to use a helmet, you probably shouldn't be riding a motorcycle. It's pretty scary. But anyways, it's there. You have a two different things in here as well. You have a visor. They have a tinted visor and a clear visor. And they also have this little visor attachment. Um, I never use these things. Sometimes I switch back and forth. Usually I always ride tinted because I find that with my polarized sunglasses, it does like a really weird thing with this clear lens. I usually never put my clear lens on until the shaded one or the tinted one gets really scratched and I switch to the regular clear visor. Now, let's get into the actual helmet. Typical bag, right? Open it up. This is their shockwave system. Basically, their shockwave system is something that plugs in to the back of the helmet and turns a regular helmet into Bluetooth helmet. What I really, really like, probably the biggest thing that I like about this helmet is the fact that this is seamlessly integrated. Super, super easy to put this into the back of the helmet. It comes with its own little tiny screwdriver. There is two screw holes right on the bottom here. You pop that out, you pop the system in. It is by far the best system that I've seen all in one integrated into a helmet. Everything about what they did with that was really, really, really good. It was smart. The only system that I've seen that was probably better um, audio quality wise is the Sina, and that's just because, or Sena, whatever way you want to pronounce it, they've been out for forever. They've been doing motorcycle communication forever. I have yet to actually try to pair to somebody else's helmet or Sena with my Atlas. Yes, I have two of them, but 
this thing is like incredibly light, like ridiculously light. Lightest helmet I have, and that's even taking into consideration, like I have a built Gringo, um, like a very simple helmet. That's like twice as heavy as this. I even have just like a cheap eBay half face helmet. That thing is heavier than this. This is super light. I don't know what they do. I'm not even gonna get into specifics. I know it has like a carbon fiber shell on the inside. It is very light. The reason why I like that is because when you are riding for long periods of time and you have any type of neck issues like I do, I have neck injuries from playing sports, getting into accidents, all that kind of stuff, having a light helmet is so nice. Having a helmet that doesn't drag your head down or pull your head left or right is just a positive thing for me. It's probably my second favorite thing outside of the shockwave system and how everything kind of just plugs into each other. Anti-fog, scratch resistant, most companies have that now. Not crazy different. The thing that they did do was they put these little latch system in so that you can pop the lenses out so much easier than that other contraption that they had. One of the things that is weird to me about this helmet um, is the latching system. I, it's not that I don't like it. I'm just used to this really gets stuck. So let me explain this to you. There's like a little metal pin that this thing clamps and locks down into. When it's in that lock position, it's a to get off. But, which right here, it doesn't seem like it, but when you're riding, it's hard to get this little notch off of that pin. It is what it is. It's just really hard. Not the best latching system that I've seen, not the best um, detents that you've seen. I'm gonna sound like the Revzilla guy and he's talking really fast like this. But it, it's kind of vague, the, the detents are kind of vague. Um, it doesn't feel like a fluid motion, like my Fly Racing helmet has very nice detents in the way that it moves. Um, this is a lot stiffer, maybe it would break in over time. I've been using my other helmet now for like five months um, and it hasn't gotten any better. So that's just something that they can improve on. Outside of that, the inside material is super, super, super soft. Um, I really, really, really like the latch system that they have here. I've become a huge fan of the whole insert thing and pull the release. It just makes it so much easier to put your helmet on instead of the old fashioned loop where you're sitting there and you have to go out and in and then to get with gloves on, it's just super annoying. I can't tell you how many times I've been going to work or coming back from work and like forget to latch my helmet and then have to pull over on the side of the road because I can't dangle around with it with my gloves on. So A plus on the latch system, I really, 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 really like it. Emergency pull so you can pull those out. Now, let's get to some of the stuff that I dislike about this helmet. Again, I like way more than I dislike about this helmet, but there is a couple things that I dislike outside of this latch system, right? Improvement from the first one, not the greatest, right? One of the things that I would improve on this helmet is the fact that, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't, I can't adjust any vents, like at all. Like I, I can't, there's no vent like adjustments outside of this little switch on the inside here, which is really weird to have to dig into your face to open and close the latch. Now to some people, that might not be a big deal. But for me, when I'm doing vlogs and I'm riding and I'm getting a lot of wind noise and I wanna close the vent, or if I'm on the phone and I wanna close the vent, having to reach in up underneath your chin to do the vent is just kind of an awkward situation to like, especially with the chin skirt here. This is a much smaller chin skirt than my Fly Racing helmet or Bell helmets. The Bell helmets, they come like all the way to here the flies they come to like about here. The Scorpion XO is like ridiculous. Like, I, like sometimes I can't even get my head in there. This one is much smaller, seamless, really nice. But still like I have to put my finger in here to adjust the vent, which is just something I don't wanna have to do when I can just easily tap something on the outside of my helmet. No vent switches on the outside of the helmet whatsoever. So all of this is just there. Whether it's open or closed, I don't know whether these are real or not. I, you know, they have a nice, bunch of nice graphics um, about wind going through and near arrow and stuff. I could say that I've never gotten hot in this helmet and I live in Southern California. So 
That's saying something. I don't know if this helmet would keep you warm in the, in the winter time in the Northeast, like when I was living in New York and New Jersey. So that's just something that you need to take into consideration. Again, just kind of a weird thing for a helmet to not have vent switches on the top and the bottom, or even on the side for these. There's really just nothing there that you can do in the sense of adjusting it. Design-wise, it looks awesome. Rorock has never had a problem with designing a helmet. All of their helmets look awesome, like amazing. The, it's just their design team is on another level, like it's really, really good. And their social media team is really great too. But some things that I just wish that it had was just an easier latching system, right? Something that just, it, it, this latching system, something to me about this, I don't know if I need to loosen anything, but something about the latching system, the way that it comes, just feels clunky. One of the things that I'll bring up that is really weird with Rorock is the, like some of the finishing is strange, right? And I noticed that on the other helmet that I did a review on. Just simple things. And now don't take this the wrong way. This is still a really good helmet. If you can get this helmet on sale, which is gonna be a major point that I make at the end of this video, get it. It's a good helmet, but you have to get it on a discount. There's just a couple of things that don't make sense outside of the vent thing, this weird latching system. Um, some of the finishes, like the gasket just looks funny to me. It looks like this helmet's never been worn. So this gasket just seems like it's already bent. I don't know how much it would, how well it would do with rain. Again, I live in Los Angeles in Santa Monica area. So I don't have to deal with rain. So I'm not sure how this would work in the rain. This, this like seal doesn't seem like it's the greatest, but it could just look that way. One of the other things, and I'll see if I can take my phone off the tripod and actually show you guys, this little tap here, right? It doesn't look like it matches. I feel like they could have done an anonized, anatized, whatever they call it, CNC black would have been so much better because, and the same thing with this too, that should have been black. This should be black, like, or matte just like this. Instead, and I'll show you this right now, this thing is just a screw and the screw is uncovered on the inside and it's just like a Phillips head. Like, I feel like there should be a little bit of rubber there or it should be recessed so that it doesn't just stick out. I'll show you guys on camera what I'm talking about. I will put this helmet on just to show you guys what it looks like. Again, it is for for the for how light this helmet is, it has a pretty big profile to it. Um, and but visibility is great. It is super wide. I can see all the way over here and all the way over here. One of the biggest complaints that I have about this helmet outside of all the other stuff that I mentioned is the fact that like this nose piece, it, it's, it's weird. I get that it's a design thing, but it's in, it's here. It almost feels like someone has their hand like a couple inches away from your face. It doesn't like, I wouldn't say it impedes your vision, but it gets in the way and it's kind of just distracting for me personally. Um, so I guess if you were to wear the helmet down more on a tilt, it would be better, but this little bump here is a little strange for me. Taking the helmet on and off, very easy. Again, it's super light for the size of the helmet, the lightest helmet that I've ever had on my head. They really did a good job improving this helmet. The last helmet that they let me review that they gave me two free ones was just not good. This one, a hundred times better. Is it perfect still? No. Is there things that I would improve with it? Yes. Like the bent thing. I'm going to say that over and over again. I don't understand why it's on the inside. It could be integrated into this. It could be a little switch. I understand they probably did it for aesthetics. That's totally okay. Not a huge problem. The price tag on these things is astronomical. Um, I don't know whether or not they put the price tags of this because it's made in another country. Um, if it's all shipped here, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a lot of R&D that goes into it. 
It does kind of remind me, I'm not gonna mention the name of the helmet company, but this nose peak, uh, usually they're white <laughs> and some of the Harley guys uh, use them. It reminds me a lot of that kind of helmet. It's in the same price range as those helmets. Um, and that's the only thing that concerns me. If you can get this helmet for like 250 to 300 bucks, jump on it. At the time that they gave me this, this helmet was like 450 plus dollars. That's I think without the Bluetooth system. So it's a lot, it's a lot of money. Is it justifiable? I'm not 100% sure. Again, if you can get this on sale, if there's a discount code somewhere out there, if they're giving sold, they, I know that they offered me a discount to give to my followers. I did not take it at the time because I don't want to promote something on my page that I don't stand by 100%. Not saying that I don't stand by this, but I just didn't want them to set me up with a referral code and me to start pumping out ads on this helmet and promos and stuff if I didn't have it in my hand, if I didn't test it for six months, if I didn't do what I wanted to do with it, to then come to you guys and say, I approve this purchase. I think that this is worth 400 and up dollars. So if you can get this on sale, get it. It's a great helmet, super light. It looks amazing. It comes with everything you need. It has an integrated Bluetooth. It has the, Emergency, emergency things. It has this little clip system, which is really cool. It has a great shin skirt. It is super quiet, even though that it's light. It's just a couple of different things that are a little strange for me that don't put it in the same realm as a Simpson or a Shoei or a Shoei, Shoei, whatever you want to call it. Some of the bigger brands that have been around for a longer period of time make helmets that are very comparable to this at a lower price point with the same DOT and ECE certification. This helmet does not have Snell, just something that you have to take into consideration. I know some of the tracks here in Southern California would not let me race or screw around on the track with, with this helmet. I needed to actually bring another helmet that was Snell certified. That's just something you have to think about. Whereas some of the other helmets in this class, the upper echelon of helmets will have Snell certification. Do I recommend this? Yes. Only if you can get it at a discount, go on Instagram, go online, look for a discount for this helmet. I know that there is a ton of creators and influencers and whatever you want to call them that are promoting this helmet right now because they're getting reached out to. They will have discounts for this helmet. I do not. I like to be free as a bird when it comes to advertising and endorsements, so I will not do that. That kind of is a weird thing that I've never noticed before. Just the tail piece is not flush. I don't know if this pops out. I have never noticed this, so if I break it, I don't know. This is, just so you can see, this is like kind of like, it doesn't, I feel like I'm gonna break it. It doesn't feel like the greatest thing in the world. Does this come off? I recommend this. It's probably like on the, in the, on the helmet scale, I'd give it like seven, like around a seven out of 10. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to subscribe. I will start making videos much more often. It's going to be a lot of review videos, a lot of DIY videos, how to. It's gonna span the whole spectrum of everything. I appreciate you guys sticking out, waiting for me to post over a year. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Now that I'm stuck inside quarantine, I'm gonna post a lot more. Appreciate you guys, as always, peace.